Welcome into the 49ers Report. I'm your host, Chase Senior. Hope all of you are having a fantastic week and weekend. On today's show, we're diving into the latest 49ers news and rumors. Now, a lot of you are listening live on call-in. For those of you who are, make sure you subscribe. Moving forward, we're going to be going live at least once a week for a live interactive podcast where you have an opportunity to call into the show and interact with me and hit me with any questions that you have. For those of you watching after the fact this weekend on YouTube, subscribe to our channel as we approach 60,000 subs, but if you want to be a part of our shows right here on Colin, you see that link at the bottom of your screen, use that download the app, create a profile, subscribe to the 49ers Report, therefore you'll be able to chop it up with me. For those of you listening right now, I'm looking at Sam, Luciano, Wet Noodle 187 Evan, and Draco two other people are listening, I'm also taking a peek at the comment section here on Colin. Max asks, should Detroit call the 49ers about Jimmy Garoppolo? I don't think so because they're moving forward with Jared Goff. I actually like what the Lions are doing on that roster. Draco Pimpin seems to be a very big believer in what Trey Lance can bring to the table. And a reason that we're talking about Trey Lance, and for those of you listening on call in, feel free to hop into the caller queue as soon as you do that. I'll be able to bring you on the show. Is that Chris Sims said that the 49ers and their coaching staff in the front office is scared to play Trey Lance ahead of Jimmy Garoppolo. And I think that's absolutely bogus because Chris Sims had relayed this quote. Anybody you talk to who saw training camp last year, either that was part of the 49ers staff or when they went and worked out with the Los Angeles Chargers and you hear people who witness those practices, there had to be concerns coming out of San Francisco early on in the year last year. I know there was. There were too many people who were like, man, the ball is everywhere. Man, he's not ready yet. That's got to scare them to a certain degree. And I just happen to disagree because the numbers during training camp and the preseason proved otherwise. Lance at training camp a year ago, as a rookie, as a guy who only played one year's final season in college, completed nearly 70% of his passes during training camp, 12 touchdowns and four interceptions, whereas Jimmy Garoppolo was actually worse, and he ended up being the starter for this franchise and helped lead the Niners to an NFC Championship game for the second time in three years. He completed 64% of his passes, 11 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. And his skill set, his athletic attributes, don't even come close to Trey Lance. Lance Lance is raw. Lance is green. He needs some development. That shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody because the guy just turned 22 years old. He needs all of the reps this offseason, and the 49ers need to do themselves a favor. They need to do Trey Lance a favor as well and give him all of those reps to maximize his ability to allow him to work out the kinks so when it comes time for the regular season and you've go through the midst of the entire regular season, Lance will work through some of those hiccups and then have the Niners in a prime position to make a run at a Super Bowl. What do you think about Trey Lance? Let me know in the comment section. I'm going to go over to the caller queue right now. I see Draco is going to be our next caller. Make sure you unmute yourself and welcome to the show, my guy. Lost Draco. Looks as though he's going to come back. So right now, let's go to Evan. Evan. You're on live on the 49ers report. Unmute yourself and tee off. Hey, um, can you hear me? I can hear you. What's up, brother? Uh, not much. And um, with this whole Trey Lance thing, I was really hoping that Trey Lance was starting last year because he proven himself worth it. But I understand benching him for a year and stuff. And he played a little during last season. But th this season, I think he could have... I have I think I did my own my own little projection for Trey Lance and like how the Niners season might be with the schedule. I see him maybe going for thirty touchdowns and twelve interceptions. Awesome. I'm going to meet you because it got a little bit windy, but I appreciate the call, Evan. And the Niners were in a pretty interesting scenario last year. I think they moved up to take Trey Lance in the draft because they were unsure about the health status of Jimmy Garoppolo, who up to that point was basically injured every single year with some pretty severe injuries outside of that 2019 season when he was actually healthy. And during that lone healthy season, he was able to help lead the Niners to the Super Bowl. And last year, they were in a prime position to make yet another run 
at a Super Bowl, as evidenced by them making it all the way to the NFC Championship game. And I know when you look at the statistical sheet that Jimmy Garoppolo didn't do anything crazy from a numerical perspective. He was pretty solid, around 20 touchdowns, and he certainly made some bad decisions from time to time, but he also helped bail the Niners out in a lot of instances at the end of games, at the end of halves, during the two-minute drill. And I can say, in my opinion, that I thought Jimmy Garoppolo at times was certainly clutch. And if Lance wasn't ready to play, that's fine. The Niners were in a good position where they were able to compete for a Super Bowl. They were among the final four teams in the NFL. They put themselves in a position where they can make a nice little run. After that 3-5 and five start, they end up rallying. And a big part of that was because of Garoppolo. Final week of the season, you go down 17-0 on the road to the Rams. You come back and beat them. Following week, you go on the road against the Dallas Cowboys. You beat Dak Prescott and Dallas as they continue to be perennial playoff chokers. The week after that, Garoppolo helps lead the Niners on the road. Snowy, cold environment, number one seed in the NFC, Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. And what did Garoppolo do? He was clutch at the end of that ball game. But now we see that the limitations held the Niners' offense back, and that's why I think it's time to move forward with Trey Lance. And I'm a big believer in him. Because he has stupid potential at 6'4", 225 with a bazooka for an arm, athletic ability, which makes the offense a lot less predictable. And actually, I think the Niners are going to be a little bit better offensively and more explosive. you got to rip the Band-Aid off and go with Trey Lance. Draco, I see you next up in the caller queue. We couldn't connect the first time. Hopefully, we can connect this time. What's good, man? Last time I accidentally hung up. You're good, brother. You're good. <laughs> but, uh... Right now, I feel like Trey going to be good. They just need to get off my man back like he ain't 21, 22. Exactly right. I, I totally feel you there. Uh, yeah, he going to be all right as long as they give him the reps. Like they already said, Jimmy not going to be throwing for a minute, so he going to be having a lot of opportunity, a lot of time if he ain't right to get right, and I just don't believe that they underwhelmed. If they wasn't underwhelmed, they already out the office as far as I know with the uh, switching of the coaches and stuff like that. But I'm just really eager to get to this practice and see who who going to make the team and who not because we, we brought in a lot of people. We got a lot of questions at the O-line. We got a lot of questions otherwise, other places. But I'm just eager to see who going who to gonna Surprised to be top dog, I guess I would say. Yeah, if you could rate your confidence in the Niners from 1 to 10, Draco, where would you go going into the 2022 season? You bring up some good points. Offensive line is certainly an issue. We're not sure if Alex Mack's going to come back or if he's going to retire. We're not sure who the left guard and right guard's going to be. Can Mike McGlinchey come off that torn quad and start at right tackle? Other than that, I think the 49ers are in a pretty good spot, but how would you rank the Niners from 1 to 10 going into this year? Mm, I'll probably do a seven because I don't know how well these coaches is at coaching yet. I mean, they probably did well otherwise, but, you know, things change, people change, and years change. So I'm not sure how the well their coaching ability is with the uh, upcoming people. We may have lost Draco there, but it's all good. The, the people that's already. Yeah, Draco's going in and out. We'll try to connect with him once more. Shout out to everybody listening here on Colin. I'm seeing Sam, Luciano, Wet Noodle, Pascal, Brian, Letterhead Movement, as well as Steve. For those of you getting into the comment section on Colin and after the fact on YouTube, appreciate that. I'm able to basically connect everybody onto the show from my phone. That's why I continue to look down if you're watching this video. Appreciate all of you for supporting the 49ers report. Let's go to Hunter now. You're on the 49ers report live here on Colin. Call in, make sure you unmute yourself, and ask away. What's up, Chase? How you doing, brother? Uh, do you think the uh, 49ers will make any other moves in free agency? I think that if the 49ers make any other moves throughout free agency, they'll be smaller moves to basically a lower level to really just build out this roster from inside out. I don't think they're going to make any big splashes, Hunter. I think one of the moves that I really want them to make is re-signing Jaquaski Tart. He's 30 years old. He's mm -hmm. coming off the best year of his career. I thought him and Jimmy Ward were one of the most slept-on safety tandems in the National Football League last year, and I actually think he's a pretty solid safety for what you can get him 
him at on a new contract that'll probably pay him between three and five million dollars. I'd be surprised if they go after a big name and make a big splash like an Odell Beckham Jr. or a Jadavion Clowney, a player of that upper echelon. What would you like to see the Niners do, though? Uh, I don't really know, to be honest. Yeah. Are you confident in this team going into 2022, or do you think that they need to still make some moves and you have some concerns about Trey Lance? Where are you at with the Niners right now? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Appreciate you hopping on board and joining the show. We can try to reconnect once again with Draco. Draco, hopefully you got better connection this time. What's going on, man? Yeah, I'll probably give it about a seven because I still got to see where these coaches are at and their coaching abilities and how they uh, work with these uh, with the people coming in and the veterans that we have. Awesome. But uh, the team, yeah, we we play solid, so we still got people coming back. We just had holes, so hopefully those holes get filled and whoever they uh, got switching at guard, tackle, center, I hope they can arrive to the occasion because – they said Jimmy do be a little longer in the pocket. We just need him. They just need to give him time. You feel me? Just talk. I agree. I agree. Thanks for joining the show, Draco. Let's go next up to Brian Powell. He joined us last week, and he's joining us once again. Appreciate the support. What's up, buddy? Long time no talk. Good to talk to <laughs> Good you again. What do you got? To you. Hey, yeah, I watched your video earlier about the uh, four potential cuts. Yep. Um, thought the Kinlaw thing was a little bold. Um, maybe just kind of go a little bit more into that because my thought process is, I mean, if if we went through the injury history of D Ford at such a high price tag, I just I, I see it very difficult to move on from Kinlaw when we really haven't seen what he can be. So maybe just go a little bit more into your thoughts of why that that could be a possibility and are there reports of that out there right now about that happening possibly happening so what brian is referencing is a video that we put up on the 49ers report this week where i broke down four potential cut candidates following the nfl draft and my thought process with javon kinlaw first round pick back a couple years ago out of south carolina i thought it was a decent pick at the time i think there were better players left on the board at that specific moment of time but in his first two years in the nfl, NFL. He's been off injured, a couple of knee issues. He got that ACL surgery last year, and he hasn't been available enough. And obviously, it was certainly yeah. a little bit bold, but that was part of the segment, was trying to go after guys who are maybe surprise cut candidates, because sometimes at that point in the season, as you're approaching the regular season, those positions and those cuts can certainly be of a surprise to a lot of people. Now, I think it's somewhat unrealistic because Javon Kinlaw has somewhere in the neighborhood of a cap hit or a dead cap hit of around $11 million. So if you were to let him go, you'd be eating a lot of that salary because he's a former first round pick. My point though, was that the pressure is on Javon Kinlaw to produce this year and throughout training camp and to finally prove that he's able to stay healthy because if Kinlaw cannot stay healthy, then I do think it's realistic that he doesn't make this team. Why is that? Because the 49ers are about two, three deep along the defensive line at all four spots, both edges and both defensive tackle spots. That's a position of priority for them. It's a position of emphasis, and it's a position that they like to have depth at. So I think that they'd be able to survive without Javon Kinlaw if he can't stay on the field. I'm a believer in his talents. I want to see him break out. I think in D'Amico Ryan's scheme, with Chris Kosarek as a defensive line coach who's done a masterful job of developing defensive linemen over time, he can be a really good player. But you know that saying, you can't make the club from the tub. And Javon Kinlaw, he's been in the tub far too often. That was my thought process there. I agree 100% where you're coming from on, you know, he needs to prove something. I just, I, I can't wait to see a lineup of Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, Kinlaw, and Drake on the outside. Like, that would just be an amazing lineup on there. I do feel like it really puts him in a position to where he does, you know, he's only got two years left to prove himself to earn that that fifth-year pickup on there. So, so I definitely see where you're coming from on that. 
Yeah, and that's really the thought process there is that if he doesn't prove himself and if he can't stay healthy, then he might be on the outside looking in. So yeah. we're going to take a pause here on YouTube. Appreciate all of you for watching today's video. We're going to stay live here on Colin. Do you think Javon Kinlaw is going to be on the roster? And do you think he might be able to break out? Let me know in the comment section right now.